I am your friend Amit and in this video we are going to learn the HTTP request versus HTTP long polling versus web sockets versus server send events. This video is a part of the system design series which we have started and you can find the playlist link in the description below. And now let's get started. First let's have a quick introduction to the HTTP request. Here is our client and here is our server. The client makes a request to the server for the data. The handshaking is done. The connection gets opened between the client and the server and then the server does its work and sends the response back to the client using that already opened connection. And then finally the connection gets closed. That's it. One of the use case of HTTP requests is we can say in Facebook application fetching the profile information and this was the quick introduction to the HTTP request. Now we need to discuss the HTTP long polling. So before discussing the HTTP long polling we also need to know about the HTTP polling which is actually different from the HTTP long polling. So in HTTP polling here we have our client and here is our server. The client can make a request to the server for the data using the HTTP request. So here the client keeps making the request at a regular interval for example 1 second or 2 second whatever it can be. Then the server does its work and send the response back to the client. Here we need to notice that the response can be empty because the server might not have any updates which are useful for the client. So most of the requests might get an empty response and in few of the requests the client gets the updates which are useful. So the problem is that we are making so many unnecessary network calls and that is a real problem. Let's take a look at the WhatsApp example for chatting use case. We can consider clients as a WhatsApp Android or iOS app. The server is our WhatsApp server. Here the client will be making the request at a regular interval for example 2 second in our case. There might be a case that we do not have any new messages and we will keep polling and draining the battery of the user mobile devices. But yes for sending the messages from the client to the server we can make the HTTP request. But this is not good when it comes to getting the new messages from the server because of the following two reasons. First, delay of message by 2 seconds as we will poll the server at a regular intervals of 2 seconds. Second, most of the time we will be getting the response empty. So we need a better solution than this. But when we see another example like a location update for a delivery boy coming to deliver you the food, we are good with 2 seconds delay in the location update. So the HTTP polling can be used. I am not saying it is recommended but can be used for these types of use cases. So this was all about HTTP polling. Now let's learn and try another solution which is HTTP long polling. Again here we have our client and here is our server. Again the client can make a request to the server for the data using the HTTP request. But here is the catch. Very important. The client waits for the server to provide the response and there will be a connection open till the server has a response to send back. As you can see here the connection is open for a long time and that's why we call it the HTTP long polling and this is why it is different from normal HTTP polling. As soon as the server has a response it sends it back to the client and connection gets closed and the client makes another request and waits for the response and this keeps on going in this way again and again and again. One more thing to notice is that we also add a timeout to each request. So when the client either gets the response or timeout occurs, it makes the new request and starts waiting for the next response again. If we consider our WhatsApp example again, this long HTTP polling is better solution than the HTTP polling because the message can come in real time and there will be no empty response although we can have the timeout 
or the reconnection again and again. But again, we can have a better solution than this too. And this was all about the HTTP long polling. Now we know how it differs from HTTP polling. Now let's learn about the WebSockets and see its use cases. First, we need to know about WebSocket. From the official documentation, a WebSocket is a persistent connection between the client and the server. WebSockets provide a bi-directional full duplex communication channel that operates over the HTTP through a single TCP IP socket connection. At its core, the WebSocket protocol facilitates message passing between a client and the server. So let's look how it works. Again, we have our client and here is our server. First client does the WebSocket handshaking with the server and then the TCP connection gets established between the server and the client through the WebSocket. Now the most important thing to notice here is that as this is a bi-directional communication, server can send data to the client anytime and the client can send data to the server anytime. And also notice that this will reduce the overhead of handshaking again and again as we are doing the handshaking only once and that too at the beginning. And this way it reduces the overhead. And this way the WebSocket has made our task very easy. Now let's look at the WhatsApp example using the WebSocket. Here the things have become better because we can easily send the messages to the server and easily receive the messages from the server. And this is the best solution and WhatsApp uses WebSocket. Now let's discuss the last one server send events which is SSE. As the name itself tells here server sends events. According to the definition it is a server push technology enabling a client to receive automatic updates from the server. Again here we have our client and here is our server. Using SSC, the client makes a persistent long term connection with the server. Then the server uses this connection to send the data to the client. But the client cannot send the data to the server using SSC. And this is very important that only server can send to the client. But client cannot send the data to the server. For that we will be using the normal HTTP request. If you want to send anything from client to server, we will have to use the normal HTTP request. So if we see the WhatsApp example again, for getting the messages from the server, it will work. But for sending the message from the client to the server, we will have to use the normal HTTP again. So this is not a better solution. The best solution was WebSocket for the WhatsApp chat use case. But if we take the example of real time stock price application, this SSE can be used as we will get the updates from the server continuously and we will have nothing as such which we will be sending to the server. So SSE is a good fit for this use case. That's it. Now we know how HTTP request, HTTP long polling, web sockets and server send events differ from each other. That's it for now. Please like, share, comment and subscribe to our channel. See you in the next video.